You don't work for Polonius if you're a dumb boat. And the cut scene where Reynaldo steps out of the castle and gets hit by a bus. A, a moving fast object of yellow variety. Bang the king. Bottom main. Maybe I'm crazy. Today we're going to be discussing the most important scene in Hamlet, hence my appearance. I wanted to dress up for the occasion for Act 2, Scene 1, the key appearance of Ronaldo, a very unsung hero from Shakespeare. There are literally no songs about him, um, which is tragic. It's That's what the tragedy of Hamlet is about, is the fact that Ronaldo is too oft overlooked. Um, also, for the occasion, you and I are both wearing matching AirPods. Um, so, I, yes. And my hope is that it improves the sound or makes it far worse. One of the two. Where we last left off um, was a, a very dramatic, and and you know, it was the culmination of an, a very exciting Act One. Um, yes, where basically. Hamlet, we introduce Hamlet, we, we meet the players, we meet Claudius and Gertrude and Horatio and all those cats. And at the end, the ghost appears, says, guess what? I'm a ghost of your father's spirit. Interpret that as you may. Guess what? Your uncle killed your father, hooked up with your mom. Check it out. Also, avenge me, love the ghost. And Hamlet's freaking out. And uh, that's where we end it. And with that heightened pace, we begin act two, scene one. You know what Shakespeare does again, which I think is the third time he's done it. He, go, he goes from supernatural to domestic. So in other words, he goes from act one, scene one on the battlements. And then that transitions immediately into the we have of Hamlet, our dear brother's death, the council meeting. Then the end of that scene is Horatio and Hamlet and the boys talking about, we'll meet at the battlements and we'll see this ghost goes right into my necessaries are embarked. Another kind of normalcy domestic scene. And then like you said, this goes from, I just saw a ghost and I'm gonna put on this antic disposition. It's dark, it's cold, it's scary. Straight into, hey, go visit my son, give him this money, give him this note. So, he, so three transitions in a row go from scary to domestic. And he does it again here. Um, Wow, did not realize that. That's interesting. I wonder, yeah. I guess, I guess for dynamic and variation. I listen, I think if you put those scenes right up against each other, you'll see you'll see why that works so well. And I think it does work. And I think it's what the play is right now. The play is straddling between ghost story and domestic story. Um, and I think if you put those scenes right up against each other and you don't put some weird scene change and lights out music and all that nonsense that modern theater does, then I think you'll get the desired effect. Um, and then, so let me ask you, before we move on, one of the last things we heard was Hamlet saying, antic disposition. I will put on this antic disposition. And I maybe we discussed it in the last episode, but why Why is that? It seems like he put it on prior to saying that because he does act kind of wild and whirling as Horatio says in the cellarage scene. But why is that? What is the effect of the antic disposition? I'm glad you brought that up because that comes into play in act two, scene one, um, particularly with Polonius's assignment to Ronaldo. Um, the idea being, deception to get to a truth and that deviation to get to a truth. Of course, no one says, why don't we just ask them and hopefully they'll tell me what's happened. Nobody, that's kind of, that's the anti hammer. That's not this play. This play is, I could just say, hey, did you kill my, my dad? You know, and mom, what's up with that? Tell me the real deal. But instead it's like, I have a better idea. Let me feign madness. And via that distraction and that right turn maneuver, I will get 
a, a, a truth I could not get otherwise. Um, and that is what is that, and that's what the first half of our scene is about. Mm -hmm. And so the fact that Hamlet and Polonius reach the same decision is on par with what you've often said in terms of their similarity, that they're kind of uh, kindred of sorts. I'm just grab something um, from the same cut from the same cloth, as it were. Right. Do you feel the same? Yeah, I do. I also think a little bit since um, since he was acting yeah, crazy, which is not a great word, but was wild and whirling. I do think it's a bit of, you know, there's this debate. Is he acting crazy or is he really crazy? I think it's one of those cases of seeing his own behavior and saying, I'm going to put this behavior on because it is coming so naturally. Kind of like someone saying, someone who's naturally clumsy, saying, oh, I'm going to pretend to be clumsy so people will laugh and make jokes, when in fact, he is naturally clumsy already. So in the cellar ridge huh. scene, he's act, he, in the cellar ridge scene, he's so shocked by what the ghost has said, he's acting wild, even before he says, I'm going to put on this antic disposition. It doesn't happen just after that. He's acting wild and then goes, from here on out, I'm going to act wild. And us go, you already have been acting wild. So I think it's not only how he naturally feels, but he's gonna use that as well. So you can kind of hide how you are really feeling. I always felt that. I always felt playing up that kind of wildness was also naturally how I felt in the role anyway. I, th I think I can meet you half to three quarters of the way on that one, just because I feel like I th it's a very good point, though, in that he makes a discovery, a very kind of um, uh, self-conscious discovery about, hey, I just, I just was a little crazy right now with the ghost stepping back. I think I'm going to choose that as my mask to get to that truth. And then I would add on top of that, he goes from acting crazy to actually becoming a little crazy, particularly by the time, you know, he gets back from England. And, you know, I guess, uh, well, it's probably a bad example. There's a fine line between crazy and passion. Yeah. And sometimes, I mean, I, I would, you know, argue maybe, but I'm sorry, before England, around the time of, spoiler alert, Polonius' death, you know, he when he, when he again has a confrontation with what could be the ghost, but what also could be in his head. Um, right, so I think, right. I, I think it's, it's a, it becomes an, uh, a, 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 an actual uh, um, madness that turns into, I'm gonna choose this madness as a mask to, I'm actually going crazy to, I'm saying, but then he goes crazy again. So it's a kind of like a back and forth mixture. It's, I don't think it's as simple. Yes. Yes, I absolutely agree. I don't think it's a symbol. I think the debate of is he, isn't he, is far more complex. And, you know, how he behaves at the play within the play, I don't think that's just simply a put on. I think he really wants to say some of that shit to Claudius and he really wants to put that stuff in the face of his mother. That's not just a shock. That's not just a hide. I think that's coming from a real place. So, so we'll see. And we'll see as, as we go on. Yeah. Yeah, but I, that's a very good point that he already has it in him. But again, a fine line between passion and madness. You know, right. where does where does the line begin and end? Boy, and that's what's exciting about seeing this play and about doing this play is where yeah. where are you choosing where are you choosing that line? Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Um. So we have moved on to Act Two. Excuse me. Yes, Act Two. We are finally getting getting into Act Two where. What we really start getting into in Act Two is, turns out, Hamlet's trying to kind of suss out Claudius, Claudius at the same time through Polonius, trying to suss out Hamlet. They're both trying to figure each out. Masks go up like crazy. Uh, it's really, the, the gameplay really starts. Um, but before that, we get, as Paul says, the most important Scene the and key. possibly the most. <laughs> this is the key to understanding not just Hamlet, but all of Shakespeare and perhaps all of literature is in this one scene. That's, you know, just, just that. Say, you, know, 
So in my in my little uh, Arden that I'm looking at, which is leaning more towards the quarto two rather than folio, it says act two, scene one, enter old Polonius. Yeah, what's up with that? It, that's in the it's quarto, although Polonius? It's not in the folio. Hmm. Old in the folio, they say, which makes me think, you know, the quarto is more of that kind of book that they used on stage. That's why there's more stage directions. Uh, like he, you know, it spreads his arms. It's more like referring to the actors in the play. So maybe that's why there. It also says with his man, I love that his man, Ronaldo. And I think in the court, it also says, and two others, which then in the folio, two others got cut because they didn't have any lines, I guess. Yes, the odd. I mean, I love <laughs> to see a Hamlet where they have 10 others just standing there, no lines. This kind of set dressing where they just kind of nod their head or do this or you know make jokes. But, but what you do is, but what you you tell those actors, you give them lines, you tell them what their cue is that's not in this scene. So they are listening intently for their cue, <laughs> and then it just never happens. Yeah, and they cut I mean. it during the actual show. Yes, just cut it. <laughs> so that so they're surprised as well. Like and that, no, we cut that. Curtain coming yeah. Down. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so, so tell us about this scene. So uh, it begins in the middle of a moment. We don't see Ronaldo arrive. We don't see Polonius in his study. It begins with, give him this money and these notes, Ronaldo. Who is him? Uh, upon looking it over again today, I'm thinking, well, who is he talking about? Of course, it is talking about his son, Laertes. Again, Polonius could have just said, here, Laertes, here is some money, but instead, he figures the best way to figure this out is to give it to his man, Ronaldo, to give to Lear if he's in France. Of course, time has passed. How much time do we know? We don't know. We think, yeah, I mean, you can deduce it. I mean, the, the audience won't know, but if you were to do the math, it, it's approximately three months from act one to act two, which is very tricky. And I don't think it, it matters. So I think it's something like Laertes went off to school and wrote to dad and said, dad, I'm out of money. Send your man and send me some money. Um, but it is good to know a little bit later on, it will be good to know that some time has passed and we're gonna say two, maybe three months based on what Ophelia says in act three. But anyways, the audience won't know that. Would you see a real time Hamlet where act one is done and then act two is not performed until three months later? Wow, I'm into it, I'd see it, yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it would take a full year. But so finally, we saw Act Five, and we were not happy. Yeah, that's anyway. right. And it would still be it would still be quicker than our entire uh, podcast yes. here. Are you pretty much um, yes? Yeah. So point. yeah. So yes. there is a big passage of time. So send this money and these notes. It's so funny. I've always heard of notes as money, but notes must mean letters. What what, what does that mean? That's a good point. Um, I would say. Uh, it must be some sort of either words of wisdom or notes in refer reference to letters. Um, I'm, I'm thinking letters since, you know, parcel post wasn't exactly operative back then. Um, FedEx was there, but I know Polonius was pretty cheap back then, so they didn't really do that. Uh, but yes, that's maybe, a good point. That maybe it's like a C sharp and a B flat. Yes. <laughs> yes. Maybe those are the F notes. minor. Yes. <laughs> Um, yes. Okay. Uh, there was there was there's was another character who was a notary public in Hamlet. Um, his line he was he was cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think his I think his line was "What about me?" And then Shakespeare realized, well, it doesn't really not so much. <laughs> um, Ronaldo, a, a, a very complex personality, responds with, "I will, my lord." Of course, <laughs> hiding the complexity inside. Simple, but very complex. Mm -hmm. Yes. I would do yes. a line ending after my Lord. Um, and that goes on for a very, <laughs> for a long time. Yes. So he is, uh, okay. So Polonius, I need to send this, I need to get this money and these notes to my son in France. And I want you to go, Reynaldo. Reynaldo says, great, I'll take it as per usual. It's his man. He probably does errands like this for him. It's gonna take some time to get on the boat and to get there. 
uh, you shall do marvelous wisely, good Reynaldo, before you visit him to make inquire of his behavior. Reynaldo finishes the line, my Lord, I did intend it. I love that. Like, of course, I will do this. I know this is what you have me do. Because Reynaldo is complex. He understands things. It don't work for Polonius if you're a dumb boat, you know? Ronaldo's got some brain. What is the history? Let's talk about the history of Ronaldo. Did anybody discuss this? Is there a book about the history of Ronaldo? Where did he come from? Is he even Dutch? We don't know. We don't know. Yeah. Um, so by I, the way, let's so I, so I love that. He says, I, I like I was going to. Polonius yeah. like, you should. He's like, I was, I was going to. That's it almost it feels like that's what they do. Yes. Which starts to make us question and just be aware of Polonius's tendency to spy, to get information, get, you know, direction by indirection, uh, which we're gonna see that happen more in the play. It sounds like something that we are used to. Um, on top of the fact that in addition to his um Smiling tactics, his uh, occasional redundancy of words, you know, and repetitive nature, saying things with like, well, my Lord, yeah, I, I did intend that. I mean, you know, you're paying me American, or in this case, you know, Denmarkies, so whatever, you know, <laughs> Dutch marks. Um, yeah. Um, and so continue. Yes. Um, so yeah, so he says, hey, hey, give him this stuff, but I also want to know how he's behaving. And Ronaldo says, yeah, I figured and I was going to do that. And I love that Polonius says, very well said, very well said. <laughs> like, you're so smart for thinking that's what you should do. Very, 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 very good. Very good. And then yes. I love the, this, then we see something that Polonius does a lot. And this is a great character thing that he does. He constantly checks in to make sure people are listening to what he's saying right in the middle of saying. So Mary well said, very well said, look you, sir. He'll do it later too. I circled a few of them where he says, he says, do you mark, Reynaldo? Mark you. You have me, have you not? See you now. He says these little phrases right in the middle of explaining to make sure people are paying attention. It's a really great little Polonius thing. And what does that tell you, of course, is that Polonius unconsciously as an insecurity complex and you know, <laughs> as, an, as an aged man and a man of perhaps too many words um, is often not listened to. So he's you know, unconsciously well, saying, Yes, to, 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 to bolster that point, he gives this beautiful speech to his son, this heartfelt speech to his son of all the things to do and not do. But then oh, he where's that? Is, is that earlier in the play? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I'll go over that later. Uh, uh, I think I missed he, it. I don't know. I don't know. But then he has to send his man to go spy to make sure his son is listening to him. <laughs> yeah. Now, of course, Polonius could also just write a letter to his son saying, are you being good? But he's like, you know what? Yeah, no, no, no. I don't trust that. I think your spying is the best way to go. Yes, great, great. Yes, uh, in, inquire me. Uh, notice the two uses of the word inquire uses one as a noun and one as a verb. Shakespeare does that a lot too. Mm -hmm. within, within four lines, he uses the word inquire in two different uh, kind of modes of speech, which is great. Oh, didn't, didn't notice that. Um, inquire me first what dancers or Danes are in Paris and how and who, what means, where they keep, what company and what expense and finding by this encompassment and drift of question that they do know my son come you more nearer than your particular demands will touch it. So, I mean, he, listen, he's really, he may, like you said, it may be a man of too many words, but you can't argue. I think his points are quite good. His ideas are quite good. He's saying, don't just walk up and ask, hey, is Laertes behaving himself? Go and say that you know him, find out other people that know him. And with that familiarity, you'll get nearer to the truth than you would if you just came out and questioned it. Fantastic. So what Paul yeah. is saying is, but he's a liar. So you gotta just get it at him. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's 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 really great. And so far, I think very clear in this. I, I feel like the speech is very clear. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, um, see what's next. Where was I? Um, uh, that, um, that, that, that they do know my son and come you more nearer than you particular. Oh, you, you were. Uh, 
you you say yes. by this encompassment and drift the question that they do know my son come you yes. more nearer you near, nearer than your particular demands will touch it yeah great take you as twere some distant knowledge of him and thus I know his father and his friends and in part of him. Do you mark this, Reynaldo? That's so great too, because Polonius kind of giving these kind of ideas, like this is how you should behave, and then turning around and checking in to make sure Reynaldo's paying attention, gives you the space as a director and as actors to fill this scene up with some action. Something is going on, that makes Polonius check in with Reynaldo. Perhaps it is just his insecurity, but it gives you space if you wanted Reynaldo to lose attention for a second or to be looking at the notes and the money or whatever, and then have Polonius say, hey, are, are you listening to me? It gives you that permission. And also notice another connection, Hamlet and Polonius. Who else in the play speaks to others and uses examples of speech? Yeah. I mean, and just did it in the scene, before, just did it yes. maybe 50 lines before. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I, I also, you know, again, another Hamlet I read said, Aphonius is Hamlet's father. I don't know. That would be a big twist. Yeah, that's quite a twist. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That would certainly, uh, it might change the play. I don't know. It might. Um, um, yes, so great. I love writing. Is it? Take you as towards some distant knowledge of him as thus, I know his father and his friends and in part him, do you mark, do you mark this, Renaldo? Um, mm -hmm. So yes, it, it's, it's like, it's, it's almost like a, um, uh, a reversal in a comedy scene. Yes, it's exactly right. Yes, that's right. Yeah, he goes on and on and then all of a sudden, boom, realizes maybe someone's not paying attention. Yes. And as you mentioned, it's great. Um, uh, great opportunity for the the lucky person who plays Ronaldo. Yes, but you know, going back to Hamlet's behavior at the end of the cellarage scene, there's so many similarities in the way Polonius is acting in this scene, not as frenetic and as wild, but like you said, offering up lines for someone else to say, offering yes. up scenarios, explaining those scenarios, um, holding court a bit, getting off topic, getting back on topic. Um, it's not a coincidence. I don't think that this scene and Cellarage scene are right next to each other. I, I, I would definitely see the similarities in these, in, these two, in these two. And so maybe we are setting it up for when they, when they are on stage together, which happens a couple of times, there's a little bit of fireworks there, which is really, in, that's interesting to me to anticipate that, I guess is what I'm saying. Makes you wonder if Polonius is who Hamlet would become had he lived. Well, they, under different circumstances, I think the two of them would have, would have been great companions as far as their minds and being witty and wordplay. I, I think absolutely, um, yeah, they have a lot in common, yeah. Uh, and I know, you know, I always point to Yorick as where Hamlet learned all of his humor but I got to say, if Polonius was his father's right-hand man, his wordplay probably came from Polonius at times. Um, you know, I would like to think that at least. So then when he accidentally kills him, spoiler alert, uh, there's more to it. There's more to it than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. Why, like, uh, okay. Killing a part yeah. of himself. Yeah. And, and the last person that like, you know, there are other people around that Hamlet would wouldn't feel so bad about, but not this one, not this guy. Yeah. This guy that things could have been, there could have been something there, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. So I'll let you carry on here with Polonius, good sir. Now, uh, of course, Ronaldo in response is, do you mark this Ronaldo? Again, reveals his complexity. Ah, very well, my lord, very well. The actors playing this should have some sort of sinister mustache kind of pointing in the down, uh, eyebrows pointing in the downward direction. It's like a if you can get mustache. the mustache pointing in a downward direction yeah. too, that's yes, pretty, true. pretty good. Yeah. And then again, uh, Polonius is feeding Ronaldo lines, uh, and in part him, but you may say, uh, not well, but if he be he, I mean, he's very wild, addicted, so and so, and they put on <laughs> him, you know. I mean, it's terrible. He's bringing up addicted. What? Um, <laughs> 
and they put on him what forgeries you please, Mary, none so rank as may dishonor him, take heed of that. But sir, such wanton, wild, and unusual slips as our companions noted and most known to youth and liberty. Uh, and then Ronaldo, thinking he's gonna add to this, uh, and gaming, my lord. Again, Ronaldo, uh, uh, he interrupted line, feels like he's like getting the quote unquote drift, which of course I love the expression, which I believe was introduced here, that is now very popular in the 1970s, not so much now. Um, but, oh yeah, fantastic. I gotta say, I, it wasn't until I was revisiting this, but I think I realized that, catch my drift. And yes, this, I, amazing. We, right, even, it's why, you know, I was thinking of Glenda Jackson, Shakespeare is the most contemporary writer uh, alive today because we still use his expressions. We have never gotten over him. We've never gotten over it. We still, you know. Um, yeah. Well, and I so, love too that in this scene, you know, I always say lean into the stuff that tends to stick out a little bit. Uh, I love that you can say the actor can get up there and say so-and-so, it just doesn't sound like Shakespeare. And for a modern audience, they don't expect to hear that kind of stuff. And yes. when they do, it brings them on board a little more. So, uh, but if it be he, I mean, he's very wild, addicted, so-and-so, like all of a sudden now as a modern audience, we're kind of snapped into it a little bit. I, I love it. He does it a few times in this scene alone where he does yes. something very modern. And and something very, um, uh, almost lower class speak, which as you know, right, he kind of yes. varies sometimes, um, grave digger, yes. et cetera. Um, and also, you know, how often do you hear the word addiction or addicted in uh, 16th, 17th century language? It makes me right. think, what was yeah. happening back then? What addictions would Shakespeare know about? Yeah. Old York, right. I knew right. it well. The Coke was his favorite addiction. Yes, like, <laughs> well, it's 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 the, the invention of the human, the Harold Bloom book where, Part of that book, he talks about how uh, Shakespeare diagnosed the human, the, 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 the psychology and the psychiatry of humans far before uh, Freud ever did. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, interesting, his, right, very his, interesting. His innate understanding of human psychology, absolutely. So yes, yeah. so the interrupted line, uh, as our companions noted and most known to youth and liberty as gaming, my Lord. And then, and, he, and so he's joining in again, those who, Oh, yearn to play Ronaldo in your future production of Hamlet post pandemic or, or during pandemic. pandemic. Um, I or drinking, fencing, swearing, quarreling, drabbling, drabbling. What's drabbling or drabbing? Drabbing. drabbling? Yeah, is, I know. I don't look Drabbling it up. is something different. I, I was drabbling earlier today. I was drabbling <laughs> down Ventura Boulevard. And let me tell you something. It took me three hours with that traffic. Drabbing, I don't know. Um, but it sounds yes. good. Yes, it's, it's whoring. Yes. Is it whoring? Yes. Yeah. Well, when I looked it up, it says whoring. Yeah. Huh. And also, I didn't know, it, I didn't know what I did. For the actor playing Polonius, Polonius is not only, of course, he's long winded, but he enjoys the exploration of these variations. No stone unturned. So, in case you're not sure what, what I mean, I'm just going to say every variation possible. I mean, he's basically, he's like a guy that recites the entire menu when he's, when he's the waiter, when you're at a restaurant. Well, 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 I think what you said in our first episode, you said there's no subtext to these people. And I think Polonius is a great example of that. Yes. If it's on his mind, he says it. And, and he, and what does that say about Polonius in his youth? Drinking, fencing, swearing, quarreling, drabbing. He knows of such things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that guy got around. You may go so far, but then Ronaldo, again, there's a lot going on with Ronaldo. Ronaldo says, oh, well, my Lord, that would dishonor him. Mm -hmm. Now, who is Ronaldo to talk to Polonius like this? Ronaldo's a somebody. Ronaldo has some self-respect. He's like, listen, I know Laertes, and I, I mean, maybe you're going too far. And Ty, why don't you continue? What is Polonius saying in response to that? He says, faith, no, as you may season it in the charge, which I love him saying, no, but when you're describing it, you're going to make it not sound so bad, or you're going to make yes. it make sense. <laughs> season it in the charge is so fantastic. 
doesn't it make you sad? I think I might know your answer already that, sorry, dear readers, this is the scene that is often cut in almost yeah. all productions of Hamlet, except for some curious few that inexplicably keep it, but then cut other major scenes, like maybe Hamlet yeah, exactly. dying or something like that, you know? Um, right. I kid you not, I forget which Hamlet I was thinking of that I saw that kept that scene, but then cut some other major, maybe one of the ones you and I saw in person, I don't remember. I don't know if we ever saw a Ronaldo scene in person, but. I don't know, the um, first time I, I played Hamlet, we had it. Oh, really? So, yes, because the guy playing Polonius, um, a guy named John Tyson, one of the greatest comedic actors I've ever worked with. The guy was a genius, absolute genius. Um, and I'm sure we too. kept it. <laughs> well, really? What? Well, what, what, didn't you see Tyser's fight against Buster Douglas? I think that's when he lost, but still. He was oh, a great. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah, yes. No, John, John Tyson, not Mike Tyson. Um, oh, sorry. So John, John was one of the most brilliant comedic actors. And I, I'm sure we kept it just because it was him that was cast in it. Mm. And he was so good. As a matter of fact, multiple times during the run, almost almost every performance afterwards, people would mention to me the part where John forgot his lines. Because later on when he says, where, 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 where was I? Closes in the consequence, that whole bit. It fooled the audience every single that's, time. Uh, that's fantastic. I love that. Yeah, yeah, I love yeah, that. yeah. So anyways, we, we, we kept it and it got great laughs. It's, it, it can be a very entertaining scene. Yeah. Yes. I, I mean, I'm falling in love with it now and yeah. you know, wishing the entire play was just this. I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so, so, so we continue. Says, um, so, yeah, okay. Faith, no, as you say, season it in the church. Yeah, it is interesting that Reynaldo speaks up for Laertes, which is kind of nice. So Polonius says, "Yeah, yeah, no, you don't want to dishonor him." He goes, "Oh, okay, so game, no, drinking, fencing, swearing, going with horse." He's like, uh, "Polonius, that's going to dishonor him." No, no, no. The way you say it, the way you season it, it won't. You must not put another scandal on him that he is open to in con in how do you say that in in incontinency incontinency I missed that syllable incontinency uh, that's not my meaning but breathe his faults so quaintly that they may seem the taints of liberty the flash and outbreak of a fiery mind a savageness in unreclaimed blood of general assault so he's just saying. You're gonna say it in a way that it's normal for young people to, to do these things, right? You're not gonna say, this is scandalous. You're just gonna say, you know, young people act this way. This is how they act. Uh, except, so laying, yeah, no, except, oh, oh I'm, no, I'm sorry, continue your, continue your thought. No, no, but he's, he's laying this on Reynaldo to be like, it's up to you the way you say it, that it won't dishonor him. Two things to note. Number one, Polonius speaks of what he knows. Mm -hmm. So he himself, but also none of this ap applies to his daughter. None of this applies to meaning, meaning what, like, meaning what? Being the, the joys and the, uh, the, the 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 fun exploration of youth, the wantonness of youth, the rebelliousness, the wild parting ways, the sexual explorations, that's for men only. Mm. Mm. See what I'm saying? You know, I see, I see, but yes, but Laertes is away. Ophelia is not away. She is here under the watchful eye of Polonius, right? And the only thing we've seen Polonius say to Ophelia is that don't speak to Hamlet because he is a star out of thy sky, whatever that line is, right? He prince is out of thy a star, prince, yeah. is a prince out of thy star. He is, he's not someone, you can't understand his obligations. You're only gonna get your heart broken. So do not deal with that guy, right? I mean, if Ophelia was away from home and he was sending Reynaldo to go, would he be saying the same thing? Absolutely not. What is it your was, evidence? Well, judging by the text about how people behave around Ophelia, in addition to how Ophelia behaves, um, it, it, my feeling is that this is a woman that is 
lives to be told what to do and to live and being told how to live. He doesn't get the same freedoms. I'm not, I'm not, to, not to get all feminist, but for some reason that just comes to mind as I'm reading this. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's two very different situations. Um, yes, I don't we don't, know. I we don't we'll need see... to go there, but it just, yeah. just popped in my head. Um, yeah, sure. Like too many things. Um, okay, <laughs> so um, where were we? Um, uh, oh, so he says, of, he says general so, assault. A, yeah, of general assault. Uh, but good, my lord, and I love this. Polonius already knows what he's going to ask, <laughs> which is so great. Yes. Another finished line. But good, my lord, wherefore should you do this? I, my lord, I would know that. I mean, Polonius just driving that conversation very much like Hamlet at the end of the celery scene. Very much like. Yes. All right. Um, uh, and so then here we go. Here's a, you know, Mary, sir, here's my drift. And I believe it is a fetch of wit. You laying these slight sullies on my son as to a, a thing a little soiled in the working, mark who your party in converse, him you would sound, having ever seen in the predominant crimes, the youth you breathe of guilty, be assured he closes with you in this consequence. Good sir, or so, or friend, or gentleman, according to the phrase or the addition of man and country. Good, my so Lord. what's going on oh, here, Ty? So good. Oh, let me point out. So you have. I might have missed I out something. No, no, no. I, I read in my text that there is an alternate version. And I believe it is a fetch of wit. Is that what you have? I do. What yeah, did I say instead? Uh, no, no, you said wit, and I like wit. Uh, in mine, it is a fetch of warrant, which there's a note in here. Yeah, there's a note in here that um, there's somewhere else in the play that that scholars believe what looks like warrant is an abbreviation. What looks like wit is an abbreviation for warrant. So this editor chose to change this one as well because a fetch of warrant they explain that it's it's worthy of this trick. It's warranted of this trick, huh. of this fetch. Um, that's how they explain it. Fetch of wit. Uh, I, I like just because I think the word wit and Polonius go well together. Also, wit and drift. I like the way they yes. go together. Yes. Um, right. Right. So right. I. I it feels more natural, but right. I mean, I, and be honest, Mary, so here's my drift. And I believe it is a fetch of warrant. It just doesn't, it just sounds yeah. awkward, but it's so what? So then what is the, what is fetch of wit? What is, I, what does that mean? And that is a, a uh, it is a, 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 a family of trick. Yeah, it's, it's part of the family of wit. What is wit? Wit is cleverness. Wit is speed. Uh -huh. You know, wit is timing. Um, yeah. So yeah. here is my drift, and I believe it's a fetch of wit, a bit of timing, yeah. a bit of cleverness. I like that. I, I, I like that far better. Yeah. Um, you laying these sullies on my son and to a thing a little soiled in the working, mark you your party in converse, <laughs> have you would sound, having ever seen in the predominant crimes, the youth you breathe of guilty, be assured he closes with you in this consequence. So of course mm -hmm. he's saying, you know, not so much Mark how he reacts. He's, he's saying to, he's saying to Bernardo, how do they react and how do they address you? Yes, that's great. That's great. And how they right and how they make sure how they agree with you about this thing, right? You can't just be there slandering my son. <laughs> yes, right? they they have to close with you by in agreement with you. Yeah, I think that's great. And you know, that mark you could be, that mark you could be refer, referring to your party, mark you your party, or it could be another one of those moments, which yes. would be the thir third one where Polonius is checking in with Reynaldo. So now you could, if you wanted to, it's an opportunity for director and actors to have an ongoing thing in this scene where Reynaldo kind of loses attention and Polonius has to keep pulling him back. I love that. I love that. Yeah, yeah could, could be. All consistent with, you know, 
I was trying to explain this to my mother today because she was looking at our episode one. Um, that yeah, unlike a lot of well, almost all modern playwrights, is that you know, you the reader, the actor, the director, um, is the key ingredient missing in terms of what's on the page with Shakespeare, and that you add to that. And unlike modern texts, I was giving her an example of David Mamet. There's really only one way you're supposed to say the words of Mamet. There's a certain rhythm. Right. There's only one way, not only you're supposed to, but I think the, there's only one way it works. There's only one right. way that it works, which Isn't I've crazy? seen this. I know. And I've seen this play, different scenes, maybe not the entire whatever, but work different ways. I've, I've yeah. played it different ways and felt like I believed it each time I played it that way. So you're right. You are the missing ingredient. I think it's a, it's a great point. Um, uh, right, so we have the examples, good sir, or so, or friend, or gentleman. And of course, all those are examples of uh, a respect. So that would be a sign of uh -huh. what if they said good sir, or friend, or gentleman. How would, yeah. how would that, that response be a reflection of Laertes? Oh, is that what, is that what he's saying there? Let's see, is, he the youth you breathe, be assured he closes with you in this consequence, good sir, or so, or friend, or gentleman. Um, oh, I to see. The phrase, yeah, so he's, he's kind of anticipating hmm. the conversation, uh, what is said and what is said in response. Yes, yes, right, right. Um, yeah, I think, and, and again, it's, I go back to as, as funny as this scene may be, as wordy as it may be, it's actually really good advice and good, like, yes, I know you're kind of spying, but when it comes to getting information from someone, right? That with that great by indirections, find directions out, it's quite thoughtful and quite good. It's like, look, you can say these things, season them in a way, but be very aware of how they close in this consequence. It's, it's great. Yes. And then, and then Ronaldo, in his complexity, interrupted line, um, <laughs> says what? Yeah, right. Very good, my lord. Yeah, of man and country. Very good, my lord. Like, like Ronaldo's in her. You got, you got somewhere to be, Ronaldo. What's <laughs> yeah. the boat? Well, the boat's not going to leave without you. You know, Ronaldo. Again, there's a lot going on with Ronaldo. A lot. And so, yeah, he's got stuff to do. His, his, you know, his necessaries are not embarked yet. So he's got to pack. He's got to, <laughs> he's got to embark his necessaries. <laughs> yeah, yes. You know, so there's a lot going on. So, yes. you know, he, this, I'm telling you, the more I learn about Ronaldo, the more respect I have for him. Because even though he's, because you know what he does, of course. After he exits, we never hear from him again. You know why? Because he took all yeah. that letters. He sold it and ran. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Like, Took the money and ran with with ne necessaries unembarked. Unembarked. He's like, because guess what? They weren't necessary. No, they weren't necessary. Exactly. Yeah, he has no necessaries. Necessaries. Yeah. So he was the arguably the smartest man in the play because like there's some crazy stuff going on in Denmark. I am out. Ronaldo out. Yeah. That's right. Ronaldo out. Uh, okay, so then Polonius is not done. Polonius is going to continue the conversation for Reynaldo. He's going to play this conversation out to the end. Yes. All right. Um, but this is a great. OK, so read through this and explain to me what you think this moment is. Okay. I, I still don't know what it is. I know it plays pretty well, but I'm not sure where it came from or what it is. Now, are you talking about, you know, and then, sir, does he this? He does. What was I about to say? By the mass, I was about to say something. Where did I leave? That closes in the consequence. And then my copy says at friend or so and gentleman. Is yeah, so that is well? a, I, that's a folio thing, I think. So Reynaldo continues on with that line. I think it's the quarto that ends up cutting the edition and just says closes in the consequence, Polonius at closes in the consequence. Those two exact lines are back to back. Right. And so, so either way. Colonia, Colonius, who is not in the scene, <laughs> Polonius says, evil twin. Not yet. <laughs> yes. Oh, Colonius, good to see you. Um, 
Polonius repeats the line at closes of the consequence. I, Mary, he closes thus, I know the gentleman, I saw him yesterday, all the other day, or then, or then with such or such. And as you say, there was he gaming there, or took in his rouse, they're falling out at tennis, or perchance, I saw him enter such a house of sale. And this is the, the Latin that he uses, um, uh, in other words, he's saying, in other words, I think it's, uh, namely that is to yeah. say, how do you pronounce right. it, vitilicit? Yes, I, you know what, it's so funny. I looked it up earlier uh, and it, yes, and it, I still don't know how to say it. Uh, um, I'm just uh, pronouncing it, I guess, as it looks. Yeah, Vitilicet, right. a brothel or so forth, see you now. Another example, he could be saying, see you now, paying attention. Yes. <laughs> Um, yes. We're bait of falsehood, take this carp of truth. And thus do we of wisdom and of reach with windlasses and with assays of bias by indirections find directions out. I love that line. Um, but in, it's, it's a great, um, as you often would point out, the um, antithesis. By indirection yes. find directions out. Yes. And so by my former lecture and advice, shall you, my son, you have me. Have you not? Have you? <laughs> you know? There he is again, there he is again. I love yes. that. Yes, it's so, yeah, that, that, that word, the deliset, or however, it's so, so, so strange. Okay, so give me your take on him forgetting what he was about to say. Well, uh, in terms of- why, 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 why Shakespeare put that in there? Like, why, why is that oh, for Polonius well, in that moment to forget what he was going to say? I think, and this is, I think it's very consistent with Polonius's character as portrayed in the air play, at least Polonius' part in it, in that he is a man that is lost among his own words and his own thoughts and distracted just in the way that Hamlet is. He's sort of an interesting kind of, uh, not an antithesis of Hamlet, but sort of an echo of Hamlet in a way. And so he gets so enmeshed in his own work because right before he says that, um, you know, he's going on, you know, have you seen, because he's getting so, he's getting into the heart of the matter, having ever seen in the predominant crimes, the youth you breathe of guilty, be assured he closes with you in this consequence, good sir, friend, according to the phrase, the addition of man and country. So he's so wrapped in this, um, and that he forgets what he's gonna say next, because that's what happens with people who are just mired and meander on, on, on with complex thoughts and words. They, they go off on tangents as Polonius does and they get lost. Mm. That's my take on it. Um, yeah, um, it's a I great think, opportunity for the actor playing Polonius to to figure out what it means. It's a great opportunity to work that into who Polonius is. It's great. I, is. I love the fact that we don't know for sure. That we, there's we, not a line don't. later on. If this was a modern play, there'd be a line later on about sometimes he forgets what he's talking about because he doesn't take his medication. It'd be something stupid like that. But it is, Shakespeare just leaves it up to you to, to figure that out, to, to well, Hamlet understand. Makes similar lines to that later on in the play, particularly during play within the play, um, and when Rosencrantz and Guildenstern arrive. You know, when he says, this is oh. too long, you know, so, you know, there are, you know, people know he's long-winded, people know he's old, even the play says he's old, and yeah. um, when Hamlet insults him, you know, talking about, uh, you know, the, the well, um, the, the not-so-great parts about being old and what happens. Sure, sure, right. Um, right. I think if Polonius was a younger man and this happened, it would bring it would ask uh, bring to mind a lot more questions, like what is happening here. But I, I think I'm leaning into age with this particular okay. part, age okay. and um, sage wisdom that Polonius himself says later on um, when he speaks with Ophelia. He says, uh, da, 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 "Spoilers." Um, uh, da, 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 da. my heaven, it is proper to our age to cast beyond ourselves in our opinion. So I think he goes beyond himself. Hmm. Yeah, I think it could. So it is just, it is just an honest, I just forgot what I was about to say. Reynaldo lets him know. So as an audience member, we're watching this thinking, 
the guy is wordy, he's wise, he's kind of a spy, but at the same time, he can be forgetful and his mind can run in the opposite direction of where he wants to go at times. Is that so what you a, think? There, or do you, there's do you a counter? fragility. Yes. I think, I, I absolutely think that's valid. Yeah, I think for sure. I wish this scene was in most productions so I could see 20 different versions of it. Um, I think there is a version of it where he does it on purpose to test Reynaldo because Reynaldo hasn't been listening. Um, oh. But I don't, I, I mean, love maybe... That. Maybe I would play with that in rehearsal and see what feels better. I don't know, but I do love, I just love this moment, Paul, because we don't know. And because you playing Polonius and playing, you know, what made the director or playing Reynaldo get to decide what it is. And I, that's, mm. as, as you know, I love it. Absolutely love it. Yeah, it's, it's a great, and uh, for a play that has soliloquies and monologues and a lot of, Prostolis, uh, I can't say it, and I'm not going to say it. Prostolicizing, prostolicizing. Um, We're going to go with that. Yep. Uh, characters being talked at and being told what to do, etc. cetera. Um, uh, it's a rare kind of, you and I talked about this earlier, one of those great moments where at, uh, it's like when people are polite when fighting with them. Like, I think you're the worst person. <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. Yeah, you're right. also polite in their You're right. We... Yes, right. I'm going to get back. Yes, I think you're absolutely right. I love that that kind of breaks the flow a little bit. There is, you know, one of the pitfalls in this play, especially for Hamlet or for other characters in this play is to always be the smartest guy in the room. And that gets you nowhere. It gets you nowhere in this play. If you're, if you're in this play, you have to constantly be learning and constantly be, be wrong and be fixing and falling off the horse and getting back on the horse. And this is a great moment for Polonius, who is, could easily be the smartest guy in the room all the time for a moment to show us that he has to work at it sometimes too. And, I, and I'll, I'll take those human moments every single time. That's exactly what it is. It's, it's a beautiful human moment, a rare sort of completely grounded, I'm off my chain of elegant words and, and why saying is too like, oh no, um, what was I gonna say? He goes yeah. like, oh, that's your friend. Be like, oh, shit, what did I say? Um, what, yeah, what did I just say? it's great. So, so <laughs> it's great. It's, it's the great. mask comes off for a second. You know, yeah. I know everything. Very good. Be like, I actually don't know everything. So it's uh, yeah, I, I love the opportunity yeah, of that, and and I feel the same way. I wish we could see that in more productions. Um, yeah, it's great. So. Um, so, so and the rest, I, I, the, I, the rest of the speech. I love the line: "Your bait of falsehood takes this carp of truth." Yes, and pretty antithesis. great. Yes, More antithesis. There it is. There it is again. I, I, I um, love carp of truth. Um, yes. And so, continue with uh, Ronaldo's brilliant response. Shall you, my <laughs> son? You have me, have you not? <laughs> my lord, I have. God be with God. you. Very well. An interrupted <laughs> line. He just kind of. Just gets a little yes. affirmation and then interrupts him immediately. Yes, but, we, but, but great in perfect Polonius fashion. He's not quite done yet. He has two more words of advice after he has said, go about your ways. Yes. Um, good, my Lord, observe his inclination in yourself. This is also kind of a debated line. Um, what does it mean to you, Paul? Observe his inclination in yourself. It's in the same family that to thy own self be true. I, I think that, you know, use your wisdom, use your judgment, use your own guidance in terms of um, taking notes of this conversation, you know? Mm. So um, use the skills you have and who you are to make the observation and take notes and let me know, which he never does. Um, um, yes, right. Again, a, a, a cut scene from Hamlet is Ronaldo um, in France getting the note like, "What? He's dead? Damn it! I'm not going to get paid." You know, like, where's the hub? Where is or, the or it's, it's, the man to... or it's at, at the end of the closet scene, just as Hamlet drags Polonius out, Ronaldo shows up and goes, "I've got news." <laughs> oh, did I interrupt something? No, no, sorry, I've reported. Yes, observe um, his inclination in yourself. Great, it's it's. It's a great line, but it's vague enough that you can make it. 
what you will, um, because the couple of additions that I'm looking at define it differently. They all define it differently. Um, yeah, which is great. Observe his inclination in yourself, meaning the way he is behaving, the way he is inclining to behave, behave yourself. Um, oh. Ob ob yeah, so be also whatever he wants, his inclination, you be what he wants, you be his servant kind of thing. Um, and then I shall, my Lord, and let him ply his music. Some say means make sure he's practicing his instrument. Some say, let him be who he's gonna be. Let him walk to the beat of his own drum. Let him ply his music. So all this that we've talked about, I just want you to report back what he's doing, but let him be who he's gonna be is kind of mm -hmm. interesting, which goes wow. back to your point which goes back to your point is that's the opposite of what he said to Ophelia or what he probably would say to Ophelia. He tells her, this is how women behave. And then he tells Reynaldo, let Laertes be who he's gonna be. Yeah. Um, but again, there's it, open for interpretation. I don't know. I love that. And it's, if it is in, if, if, the, if the choice by the way, for the actor is to, you know, let, it, let Laertes be who he wants to be, it's an odd thing to say at the very end of the conversation. You know, it's an odd thing to say kind of as, as an aside, like, oh yeah, don't, don't bother my son. Let him be who he wants to be. It, it's so- Well, it is, but yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, the truth, because what is Reynaldo's task? His task is give him money, give him notes and ask other people about him, not change yes. what he's doing, not, right. not stop him from drinking, just ask other people how he's behaving. Right. Yeah, and then uh, Ronaldo has has the great line, "Well, my lord," his last so line in the entire play, you know, which the cut line is, "Well, my lord, I will not be seeing you ever again." Love, Ronaldo. Um, right. Which yeah, Stanley. The all the meter is so great. I don't know why they cut it. <laughs> yes, I think I yes, and and the cut scene where Ronaldo steps out of the castle and gets hit by a bus. Which is weird because yes. buses being introduced in 1603 way ahead of its time, but he gets probably why he didn't see it coming. Yes. Also, the the scene after that where they explain what happened to others, like a, a, a moving fast object of yellow variety. Um, what? Yes. What? <laughs> Ophelia, it is making a sound like an elephant, but uh, meets a tiger. <laughs> this would be a, a man sitting on it with some sort of cap, you know. Aside, um, <laughs> waiting uh, on a, uh, a stop, and Polonius ends farewell, and that, of course, is yes, the play and the play ends. The done, done. So, um, by indirections, find directions out. Um, is such a such sad collateral damage. Cutting this scene is losing that line because isn't that what happens in the rest of the play? Isn't everyone Hamlet? Claudius, Rosencrantz, and Guildenstern, isn't everyone doing that? Finding out through other ways? Like that's exactly what happens in the rest of the play. Even up until the point of the whole fake sword fight at the end, everything is finding direction through indirection. It's incredible. And it's so sad that cutting the scene, we lose that line. Yeah, I mean, I think, are you against, instituting a campaign to make sure the scene is in every future production of Hamlet? Uh, I've, I've already, I've already started a, uh, yes, I, I've already started a, a, a fundraiser uh, just because I want money. But beside that, yeah, starting a campaign. Yes. I, I have read that campaign has raised $300,000, um, not well, given to people in need, which I think is very commendable oh, no, no, to no. you. No, right, yes, no. Yes. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, it's in my super pack. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hamlet Good. super pack. Duly noted. So the the scene then takes a right turn and turns of a different color. Yes, yes. Oh, and I would like to point out little a very little thing, but it gives you an idea of I think the pace of this whole play and the pace of these scenes that in most versions, I think Quarto and the Folio. It has enter Ophelia before Polonius says farewell to Reynaldo. So it's not like farewell, the scene ends, there's a stop, Ophelia enters, we start a new scene. Things are dovetailed 
on top of each other. As Reynaldo's leaving, Ophelia is entering. Polonia says, see you later. Boom, Ophelia's there and we start that, right? And I, I think that's a clue to how this play should be done. It's a very small thing, but I, I like it. Well, it's not small at all because the, the pacing is intricate to a successful production of Hamlet. Otherwise it's going to, whether you do the full text or not, it's gonna feel like it's four hours long. You know, sure. so yeah, you know, it's very yeah. important. So, all right, so take us into this, my friend. Okay, how now, Ophelia, what's the matter? Oh, my Lord, my Lord, I have been so affrighted. <laughs> what, in the, name, in the name of God? My Lord, as I was sewing in my closet, Lord Hamlet with his doublet all unbraced, no hat upon his head, his stocking fouled, unguarded, and down giddy to his ankle, pale as his shirt, his knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport, as it's if he had been lucid out of hell. To speak of horrors, he comes before me. Nice. So the first thing, so a lot of things jump out, but the yes. first thing I will comment on is my horrible lucid accent. Out, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> lucid out of hell to speak of horrors, which is exactly what the ghost was. The ghost was mm. lucid out of hell to speak of horrors, right? If if I were not forbid to tell the tales of my prison house, you know, he says I could tell these horrible tales. He's come out of purgatory. So it's like this look on his face, he's kind of carrying the thing that he saw a few months ago. It's just an interesting um, kind of mirror of, of those two things. Um, so if we break yes. that down, so if we break that down, doublet all embraced, right? So his, his vest is open, no hat upon his head, which apparently was a thing, always wore hats. <laughs> that's right. Uh, if you're not wearing a hat, that's bad news. His stockings fouled, right? So his, his nice socks are dirty. They're not being held up by a garter. They're down by his ankles. He's pale as his shirt. So also, if you are a costume designer on this show, just take a look at this. How many times yeah. have we seen this description and then cut to none of it? None of it at yes. all. Even that production we saw in San Diego, while she was giving the speech, they brought on Hamlet as if maybe a flashback or something. And he was doing the opposite of what, she, not only, he was doing, he was writing on his arm and he had no shirt on. So it made Ophelia look like a liar. Like, what are you trying to tell us? That production was so bad. <laughs> And by oh, a liar, so I don't know if you remember that. the liar. She she looked like a musical instrument, is what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, she, she yeah <laughs> she had eight strings. Um, pale as his shirt, knees knocking each other, and with a look so piteous in purport, as if he'd been loosed out of hell to speak of horse, he comes before me. All right, pretty clear. And Polonius goes straight for kind of where they picked where where they last spoke about this three months ago. Last time we heard them speak about this, about Hamlet, would have been three months ago, uh, about her not giving him time. Uh, and he goes right to mad for thy love, which is a good guess, right? Yeah. I, I don't think, I mean, maybe he, he turns out to be wrong, but it's not a bad guess. Also, it should be noted, three months have passed and uh, in terms of he, uh, Ophelia and Hamlet, we only know of the relationship in terms of Polonius' speech to her. And also we know at this point, no one knows of Hamlet's conversation with the ghosts and no one knows the contents of Hamlet's and, and, and the uh, Hamlet's mission. And so you wonder, if you're the actor playing Hamlet in your imagination, what was the moment before? What was what was what happened to Hamlet's within? I think I accidentally turned on. One second here, I think I mistakenly turned on Billy Joel. Hold on, one second. One <laughs> second John here. at the Bring bar. He's a friend of mine. There he you go. Um, I think he's saying, it. "Don't ask me why." Kind of prophetic. I don't know. Um, uh, Paul no. is a real estate novelist. Okay, that's, that's right. Get his drinks for free. So, um, in the three months, what has happened? She has spurred his attention, and Hamlet has told no one. So he's isolated and alone. 
And so by the time this happens, you know, he the madness has set in. And if his, I mean, you could say, well, this was part of his goal. I'm like, I don't know, was his goal to appear unbathed and disheveled? Like, you think he thought, I, I have an idea. I'm going to go there and feign madness to Ophelia, freak her out, because that's what I do with people I love. To what goal? Now, one could argue, well, that would be madness, like, well, true. But what is madness? But, but anyway, um, sounding like Colonius all of a sudden, too much of this. Um, but yeah. It's, it's, I've always been curious about what- I think that's a very good point. I think that's what you have to address in the rehearsal. A couple of things that we know, what you just said, we know, cause she's about to say, I did uh, like basically return his letters and say he couldn't visit me. Yeah. And we also know because Polonius is gonna go to the king and say, I think I've discovered the source of your son's madness. So we do know in the past three months that he's been acting odd that everyone in the castle or at least the king and Polonius have been saying, why is he mad? We can't figure this out. So some behavior has been going on, which is making people question him. Yes. So if, if I kind of put myself into his mind, I, the thing about, you know, losing my father, my mother basically has isolated me, my world is turned upside down, I saw a ghost, all of this stuff. And the one person who maybe I could trust and speak to who will love me, now won't let me see her, and now sends my letters back. This to me makes sense actually. Going into her room and acting a little weird and grabbing her by the wrist and looking at her face and looking at her as you walk out the door, pale as your shirt, feeling shitty kind of kind of tracks also on a different note now that i'm thinking about this you one could ask well why didn't hamlet in that scene say hey how come you haven't been returning my letters what's going on there feely and then feely's like <laughs> dude daddy told me to whatever hamlet right. crazy or not crazy has it could be possibly putting on a mask to elicit a reaction of truth. It's possible. Yes, yes. Because that is the sure. theme, or among the many themes of the play, is that creating a distraction and deception in order to garner a truth you cannot get otherwise. So happiness that's so often madness. Anyway, again. Yes, no, I, no, I, 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 think, I think you're right. I could honestly, follow the directions of her description and both I could do it once and make it just look stupid crazy and I could do it a second time and make it look honest and hurtful and uh, un, uh, un, uh, unrequited love it again that's what Shakespeare gives us we are the missing ingredient we have to make that decision um but for me for the despair that he's going through it makes sense. I agree with you. I don't think he said, oh, I'm going to dirty up my socks and unbutton my vest just to look crazy. I think he's kind of in that state right now. I think that's yeah. kind of where he's at. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Okay, sorry. Let's let's keep going. So Matt, for thy love, I feel he says, my Lord, I do not know, but truly I do fear it. What said he interrupted line? Um, mm -hmm. Bonius again, emphasizing the urgency of the play, Polonius wants to get to the heart of the matter, but I do, truly I do fear it, what said he, one line. And then Hamlet as Ophelia, what does she say in response? Mm. He took me by the wrist and held me hard. Then goes he to the length of all his arm and with his other hand, thus o'er his brow, he falls to such perusal of my face as he would draw it long, stayed he so. At last, a little shaking of mine arm and thrice his head, thus waving up and down, he raised a sigh so piteous and profound as it did seem to shatter all his bulk and end his being. That done, he lets me go. And with his head over his shoulder turned, he seemed to find his way without his eyes for out the doors he went without their helps and to the last bended their light on me. Uh, I know that I may, I may sound crazy saying this, but none of that sounds crazy to me. <laughs> like if I'm, 
if I think this is the last time I'm going to see her, I mean, maybe I would have said something. Maybe I don't have anything to say. Or maybe I know whatever I say is going to be reported. Whatever. I don't know. But holding her by the hand, looking at her face for a very long time, and then staring at her as I leave the room, I, I don't know. It, it, it does sound like mad for thy love to me is what it sounds like. Yeah. I mean, if it is an act, um, uh, it's quite it a could very be. specific one. It, right, it possibly sure. could be. I love, I love how specifically she describes it. You know, and yes. that he, he he nodded his thrice his head, thus waving up and down. Not <laughs> yeah, twice, right. but thrice. Right. Um, is there so, a world somewhere, Paul? Is there a world where, and I don't know how anyone would ever know this, where Hamlet did say something and Ophelia just chose not to say it. Yes, I don't. I don't know. I don't know where that gets us in the play, but it just struck me right now. There's a moment in there where she goes to say, and then just decides not to say. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, my only count to that would be, if that if if that were to have happened, it would make just a little less sense about Ophelia's old madness and her own confusion. I think, I think yeah, it's the masking. And it's the um, deception that's, that that's true. contributes to her madness. So, um, right. And I think it's probably better too if, in the nunnery scene, this is the first time they've spoken in three months. Yes. When when we get to the nunnery scene, which is which is coming up, you know, in the same day, pretty much, or in the it's next a, day, actually. Yeah. Um, Clonius response: Come, go with me. I will go seek the king. This is the very ecstasy of love, which whose violent property fordoes itself because he speaks of what he knows and mm -hmm. lends the will to desperate undertaking as oft as any passions of yeah. heaven that does afflict our natures. I am sorry. What have you given to many hard words as of late? Hmm. And Ophelia says, yeah. No, my good Lord. Yes, no, my good Lord, but as you did command, I did repel his letters and denied his access to me. Boom, he finishes the line. Yeah, that, that made, made him mad. I love this. I am sorry that with better heed and judgment, I had not coded him. I feared he did but trifle and meant to rack thee, but beshrew my jealousy by heaven. And by heaven, it is as proper to our age to cast beyond our, ourselves and our opinions as it is common for the younger sort to lack discretion. Come, go with, go we to the king, this must be known, which being kept close might move more grief to hide than hate to utter love come. I had to look up that last line and really give it some thought to understand it. The uh, more grief to hide than hate to utter love. Yeah, I mean, I, I understand it, but I can't point to base. Basically, it feels like he's saying, like, it's going to cause more grief if I don't say anything later than the hurt it's going to cause right now. But I don't know that I can point word to word and tell you where that is in the line. But that is what he's saying. Yes, more grief to hide uh, than hate to utter in love. So basically, you know, uh, it's. It's better to hide. Uh, it's it's worse to hide than to utter. You know, so it's you know, yeah. which of, which which right. of course is ironic because what does everybody in the play do? Yeah, they hide. They hide. No one utters. This is an no utterless play. I think that was no the one one title, Hamlet, the utterless play. Utterless no one's play. uttering. So so I do want to make a little point here, which, which of course it's up to the director, but I just think it's clear. He says to Ophelia, come go with me. I will go seek the king. And he says, come go we to the king. And then he says, come. And then most people in the play, when he shows up at the king, Ophelia is not with him. And people say, well, the stage direction says enter Polonius. It doesn't say enter Polonius and Ophelia. Uh, you know, what did he leave her outside? I think in his lines, he says, come, go with me. We go together. I think the next scene is so much more powerful where they're reading the letters if Ophelia is there and I'm backed up by the text because he says it three times. 
That's I think there is a anyway. cut scene in scene two where he's like, oh, one second, King, I got to go get my daughter. I'll be right back. And for some reason, he has a very harsh New York accent. I don't know. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Bad or he says, I don't know. Oh, he says, Feely, wait outside the door. I'll be right. Just stay here. <laughs> That's right. Ricky in a strange New York accent. Very odd. I think that is in the ninth quarter. Hey, um, hey, very ex expostulate. expostulate, you know. Expostulate. Hey, and, hey, and hey, 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 is, hey look. is serving pizza. <laughs> There's a pizza <laughs> pie for some reason. It's you know, sweet. forget about it. Expostulate. Hey, yeah. what's going on? Bada think... boom, bada bang. The king bada bang. Hey, what are you going to do? <laughs> Had to crack the wind of the poor face. <laughs> That's right. I think that was the original ending of Hamlet, which they took out, was what are you going to do? He's dead. <laughs> yeah, so uh, a lot of these change since since since, since, since uh, and then that is that ha and then we have, the scene is over. More grief to hide than hate to utter love come. So it's yeah, a cliffhanger. Uh, yes. So she but so we, we we know that they've been worried about Hamlet for a while. The king has obviously spoken to Polonius about I don't know why he's acting this way. So something's been going on and, you know, Hamlet's been behaving a certain way and Polonius thinks he found the answer, which, I, 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 again, I said it before, I, I, think it's, I think it's not a bad conclusion to make. It makes sense. I told you not to speak to him, except for the fact that his father died suddenly and his mother remarried. No one seems to work that into the equation. No. But Polonius, but Polonius says, Did you give him any hard words of late? Yes. And I love that Ophelia says, I mean, I didn't say anything mean to him, but I I told him not to talk to me and I sent back his letters. That's pretty mean. Yeah. And I think there's another line where she's supposed to say, It's all your fault, Daddy. So whatever. And then she walks off. Yeah. Get, and talk to the hand, I think was written in there. Which yeah. And very, she kind of she's like. Yeah, she's like, Feely loves Hammy. Yeah, that's right all the word that. I, I used to wear that t-shirt in high school. Everybody wondered oh, what that all was did. about. We all yeah. did, yeah. It was such yeah, a Feely, big trend. Feely loves Hammy. Um, so, yeah, speaking so of that's... Feely loves Hammy, cons consider this scene, as you mentioned, very kind of domestic compared with the previous scene, which is yeah. gigantic in scope and depth. And outside, of course, of the complexity of Rinaldo, and the sad demise, the rise and fall of Ronaldo. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a pretty kind of uh, down to earth domestic scene. Basically an assignment is given, a daughter's freaked out about a boyfriend. That's pretty much what's happening here. Yeah. Well, and we do get to see, I think Polonius have another human moment. I think some editors tend to believe that first I am sorry, uh, is him about to say, I am sorry that with better heat and judgment, I had not quoted him, but he goes back and interrupts himself. I am sorry, what have you given him any hard words of late? I, I like hearing Polonius say, admit that he was wrong a little bit and to say, sorry, and to say, you know, people of my age, we tend to think we know more than we do. And I'm sorry that I, met I it's another great human moment for characters who could easily be the smartest person in the room all the time, I, I really like it. I love that Polonius kind of humbles himself a little bit. And to Ophelia of all people. Yes, true. You know, I mean, here he is very pretentious with Ophelia, very preachy. And then, you know, and when he says that hath made him mad, I'm sorry, that was due to heat and judgment. I had not quoted him. He's speaking to her, but also to himself, you know? Sure. You know, I, I, I mm -hmm. read the betrifo of meant directly, but beshrew my jealousy. You know, even when, when you say beshrew my jealousy, you might as well be saying beshrew my foolishness, my, my mm. idiocy. It's a rare case where he's kind of, I did wrong. And then yeah. he explains, well, by heaven, it is to prosper to our age to pass by beyond ourselves, in our opinion, than it is common for the younger. So, so he's kind of justifying mm. his foolishness. Yeah, but very self aware, which, yes. which can like, sometimes. Like Hamlet, very, very much like Hamlet. Yeah, which when there are characters in Shakespeare plays that maybe I don't relate to, sometimes it's because they're not self-aware, you know, or if that modern audience doesn't relate to them, him being so self-aware is not something to be overlooked. Yeah, I think it's great. It, it, um, Self-awareness is a sign of intelligence, I'd like to believe, I think. Uh, Claudius has it. As evil as he is, you yes. know, 
Right. Um, that's why it's part of that part of the human elements of these characters. So as much as we can leave that stuff in, that's why you've heard me say many times, makes me angry when the person playing Hamlet just plays the smartest guy in the room. He just plays too cool for school all the time. There's nothing interesting in that. It's interesting to see someone constantly question and get knocked off the horse and climb back on and be wrong sometimes and have to figure things out and put the puzzle back together. That's human and that's more interesting to watch. And that's what Polonius is doing. Well, yeah, it's, it goes to the, um, the allure of vulnerability. It's vulnerability that pulls you into a character. Hubris, not mm. so much. Um, yes. uh, hubris becomes uh, a cartoon character in a way, even though there's, there's something that you know, we, we want to admire Hercules as Shakespeare often mentions in Hamlet as, as the antithesis. Hercules is the anti-Hamlet in a way. But, yes, right, right. But the play is not about the strong, this, this, this strong man with incredible strength you know, um, who I suppose battles monsters and such. This is more, this is a human story that deals with very real problems. I think you're right. And I think I've said, said this before that for me, the key to playing Henry V was that he's not Henry V at the beginning of the play. You have to watch him try and become a king by the end of the play. And it's the key to playing that role is doubt and insecurity all along the way and trying mm -hmm. to overcome that. No one wants to see someone who got it figured out for two and a half hours. Him, he becomes Henry V at the end, not at the beginning. Uh, he's Hal through most of the play. So, um, so it, it's, it's those it's those human human moments that I think are in this play all over the place, and and we should definitely lean into those. Absolutely, absolutely. Again, it just it's the reason why. The audience, at least the right ones, have compassion for Hamlet and connect with him. And the yeah. wrong audiences hate him and throw food at the stage. Yes, right. Now, it depends on the food, you know. That's right. true. If you're, if you're throwing something I enjoy, that's fine. Yes. Um, all right, nice. Uh, again, once again, a lot in there, and it's nice to take it that slow. Yes, and for what we, we you know, facetiously talk about being a slight scene that is often cut, because as well it is, often cut um there's still something to it is not to be disregarded you know there, there's still yeah. some meat to it. there's some great dialogue and some great pearls of wisdom and you know it's it's i understand the constraints of time but it's it's still again its own work and again features the greatest character in literature <laughs> that's right <laughs> yes i i think you're right uh all right my friend have a nice dinner date and uh we will speak again soon Yes, until next time. Baby, I